Well, this is our last week of Power Play shows for this year, so each day this week we'll be featuring some Power Players of the Year. We're doing them in no particular order, but we'll be bringing you the players and some of the biggest stories of this year. For the first one, we flash back to March of 2022. The war in Ukraine was in its first month. The conservative leadership rape was ra race was ramping up. And then comes in a new power-sharing deal on Parliament Hill. It was the Liberal NDP Supply and Confidence Agreement. In exchange for some key policy planks, like the National Dental Care Program, the NDP would prop up the Trudeau government and keep it in power until 2025. So far, the dental part of that deal is on track. So is the one-time $500 top-up of the Canada Housing Benefit. And... 10 days of paid sick leave for federally regulated private sector workers. Well, that starts next year, so another box checked. So to kick things off, here's our first Power Player of the Year, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh. Welcome, Mr. Th Mr. Singh. Thank you for being here. First, I wanted you to give us your thoughts on the passing of Mr. Carr and um, what he meant to you. He's someone who, who dedicated his life to public service. I, I want to extend my condolences to his family. Um, he served his constituents and he served Canada. He was a force for the people of Manitoba and for the entire country. And his passing is going to be grieved by many people. Moving on to some of the news that you were talking about today, your request to emergency debate on the healthcare crisis and a number of hospitals. When you consider the battle that we're seeing going on right now between the federal government and the provinces, do you think that the government should actually be giving the provinces cash with no conditions as they want it right now? We've taken a really strong position on this, saying that Canadians expect that we spend money, we know where it's going, and that it's going towards what it's intended for. Mm -hmm. So it makes a lot of sense that if we're spending money on healthcare, that there's clear checks and balances to make sure it is being spent on healthcare. That's something Canadians expect. But what Canadians aren't satisfied with is in the midst of a healthcare crisis that's hurting our children. It's children in hospital right now, whereas in the past we saw long-term care homes and seniors that were impacted by the pandemic. Right now it's, it's our children that are being impacted by this current health crisis, and no one is satisfied with provinces saying, well, we want the money and no strings attached. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the prime minister saying, well, it's got to be strings attached. Neither of that uh, discourse is actually helping kids in hospitals right now. And that's what we want to see happen. We want to see some emergency relief to deal with the crisis. We've heard from nurses, doctors, from patients, from parents, from but children. But what would come from an emergency debate, which you were going to call for, um, uh, you know, when the House was sitting today, that, that's not going to happen because of the, the passing of, of Mr. Carr. But ostensibly, you will call for that yes. potential tomorrow. So what will that accomplish in actually trying to get the ball rolling and getting care for kids? We want to ramp up the pressure. We want to uh, bring forth the stories and how serious this is and how the, the, the action so far, the lack of action so far um, from the Prime Minister, from Justin Trudeau, is insufficient. It is, it is wrong that there's no action, given how serious it is. We had a press conference today, and a nurse shared that we've got healthcare workers that are crying before the shift and crying after the shift because they can't give the care that they are trained to give to patients because they're so under-resourced and understaffed that people are, are waiting for hours and hours for care. The Red Cross, which is called into disasters, is right now called into the Children's Hospital in Ottawa, the, cat, the nation's capital. Things are at a bad stage, and so we want to draw attention to that, to ramp up the pressure to say, you know, Prime Minister, you've got to act. You have to show leadership. You've got to step up and find a solution. Some would say the ultimate pressure would be removing your support for the Liberal government. Well, we're not giving up our fight. And to remove pressure at this point would be to give up and say, you know what, we let the, pre the Prime Minister off the hook. We go to an election right now. And it's something that, that we have mean, the power. I mean, there's no confidence motion before the House. You can remove your um, actual support of them as a, a signal that things aren't working out and that the next confidence motion, there could be an issue. Well, that is a decision that we can make at some point. But right now, I don't want to give up the fight. I want to keep on fighting using the power that we have. In the agreement, we laid out clearly that healthcare is a priority. And we want to use the power that we have to keep on fighting for, for help. There might be a moment where after we've exhausted fighting and we've pushed as much as we can and there's no more that this government's willing to do for people and the prime minister is no longer willing to listen to us or to be forced to do what's right. And that at that point, we'll make that What's decision. that trigger point, though? I mean, I, I think Canadians want to understand what is that moment in time when you'll say, OK, that's it. Well, it's certainly not now. We're nine months into it and we're, we're raising the alarm. We are fighting hard. We're putting it's a our pressure. in health care, then what do you do? If, I mean, what is, I'm, I mean, specifically in the health care crisis, mm -hmm. what is your trigger point, your threshold to say, no, this is enough for us to remove support? 
there, there may come a time, and we'll, we'll arrive to that point when we, we've exhausted all efforts. We've not exhausted all efforts now. Right now, what we know is that we need to increase the pressure. We need to keep on fighting. Families are depending on us. Kids are depending on us. Uh, healthcare workers are depending on us. So we're going to fight to say we need action. We need the prime minister to step up. We need federal leadership here. We need a solution to the healthcare crisis, and we're going to keep on fighting. There will be a time when uh, we'll make that decision, if it's the right decision to make for Canadians. Right now is the time to fight, and we're going to keep on fighting. So as I introduced you, you're one of the power players of the year because of the supply and confidence agreement that you brokered with the government. Nine months in, um, do you need to manage your expectations going forward based on how it's going, or do you think it's playing out the way that you had expected and the way that you had hoped it would? Well, we've been able to achieve some really significant things and things that would not have happened but for this this agreement and the fact that we used our power to force the government to do things that they voted against not too long ago. The dental care program is an example of something they voted against with the Conservatives not too long ago, now it's happening. Paid sick days, we asked for uh, countless times during the pandemic and the government's response was no, now it is the law in Canada, we made that happen. Uh, in addition, Pharmacare is something that the Liberals voted against. That's something in the agreement for next year, the legislative framework. So there's a lot of things that we've achieved, a lot more that we need to do. Uh, so far, we feel like we've made a difference in people's lives, unlike the Conservatives who have made some noise but can't show any concrete changes they've made in a minority government to make people's lives better. We can show a GC rebate, rental benefits, dental benefits, real concrete changes in people's lives, and we're proud of that. But do you think when you go to the doorstep and are looking for votes in 2025, do you think that Canadians will make that connection that that was the NDP and not the Liberals and the government that was actually making those programs helping those Canadians. How do you sustain this to make sure that you keep <laughs> it on Canadians' minds Please. that it was the NDP that did it and not the Liberals? I think it's a fair question. I think it's going to require, require more work. Uh, we're going to have to continually remind people that we were fighting for them. We've got proof points that gives us uh, an avenue or a path to make that argument. People will believe if we show, listen, they voted against this not, to, not just two years ago. They voted against dental care. Now we're making it happen. But you're right. It's going to be something that we're going to have to continually remind people of with the goal of saying we forced the government to do this, but what would happen if you gave us the honor of serving this country as the government, gave me the honor as being the next prime minister, and imagine what we could achieve. I think this is gonna be an ongoing process where we have to let people know we fought for you and we got you this help. More can be done and more needs to be done. Imagine if we were actually in power and what we could do for you with a government that's focused on your needs. And that's gonna be an ongoing process. Last question for you. There's a lot that is supposed to happen in the Supply and Conference Agreement in 2023. What's the first thing you want done and accomplished for Canadians? Well, the major thing is we see the, the interim dental care support for kids under 12. We want to see the national program, which is going to be for children 18 and under, for seniors and people living with disabilities, a national program where you go into a dentist or you go into a hygienist and your bill is paid for What's by the, the federal government. That? That's going to be by the end of the year. But do you want it earlier? If you could get it February, I mean, are there no other pressure points for you to say it should be done by June rather than by the end of the year? Well, we wanted to see, see it done well. We want to see it work properly. And we're going through all the proper steps to make sure that people can actually rely on this program. It's going to be there for them. That's one major one. We want to see uh, some of the supports continue for people that are dealing with the cost of living crisis. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be another thing. In addition to our deal, we want to make sure that food prices are dealt with. That's why we push for that inquiry into food prices. We want to see some outcomes out of that so that people are able to buy groceries. That's something that Canadians are right now worried about. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh, also 2002 Power Player of the Year. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate this.